it's Blue Monday or Monday Blue, uh, depending on how you feel and what happens. This weekend at Goodison Park, an extraordinary uh, slip up for Everton, to put it mildly, in the last, what, seven, eight minutes at home to Bournemouth, losing the game by three goals to two, which is quite remarkable given the way in which we played, which many consider to be the best performance we ever had with Sean Dice as Everton manager. Me and Les back as usual. Uh, I wasn't on the post-match, so um, the way in which we're working today, so I'm just going to give my sort of brief reflection on what that game was. Um, very different from the lads who did the, the post-match outside the den, because I've actually had some time to think, fume and throw up about it. <laughs> Unlike they, <laughs> when you were able to have a, a drink over it, Les. But um, before I begin, have you had any any different reflections on, on what happened to Goodison on uh, on Saturday? Um, not really. I think I think I was all in on the manager on Saturday. Um, I think after speaking to Matt Flusk um, on the post match, I probably did let the players off a little bit um, because you know it was definitely on them. I think as he was saying, you've got you know ten players there, eleven players out there who you know experienced players should be able to see that game out. You got like England's goalie. You got Tarkovsky. There's enough players in that team to see it out, but it still comes back to the manager for me because when maybe two or three of those players aren't the most mobile or are a bit knackered and they're still on the pitch, that takes you, that takes your team right down, doesn't it? Then you know mm-hmm. you, you've got like eight lads out there who can still put the effort in, and it it just it puts you at a disadvantage. So I'm pretty much the same. I'll, pro- I'll, I'll probably throw it a little bit more on the players than I did at the weekend, but it's still all on the manager for me. That. I mean, as, as soon as I saw the game um, and reflection, his, his comments have started really, really getting to me. What he's made, firstly, blame the fans the other day, the, the other week, didn't he? Um, gone into the players, well, which is understandable, which many fans will think, well, yeah, obviously you can't do anything on the pitch. That immediate sort of hindsight what everybody says when a team loses a game it's like well he, he couldn't have affected it if he was the player on the pitch but he could have done a hell of a lot of Everton winning that game in regards to what he introduced from the bench um, he's I mean I, I, I said you've got to get rid of him I mean if you were to take away the context of managers we've got rid quite quickly or really quickly in our years gone by I can understand why people are saying you're really crazy saying that Done a poll this morning. If anyone just wants to check it out, with bagfuls of comments that they've made, um, I think we've had like almost a thousand people who've come in with their reflections on it. Just simple question: Would you sack Sean Dice before the fourth league game of the season? Sixty-one percent of fans have said yes, they would. Obviously, with the thirty-nine percent who said they wouldn't. Um, now, I, I think many of us are in that bubble that we've had for many, many years, Les, when. You see situations like this begin, the manner in which we've lost, and um, can see them what we have so far, which is 10 goals. Uh, we've only scored two. Um, the manner in which we scored the two, we went 2 0 up in a game as well. A lot of that is going to be piled upon Sean Dice. And, and listening to the post match, it was in, incredibly interesting how people looked upon this. Um, I sort of it, it's interesting what, what you say, and then you, when you get to Matt Flusk on, on our post match, it's it's a different perspective. I always find interesting in his take is in response to everybody else's, really. Um, personally, I was sickened by what I saw from Dice. I think if you're a manager of experience there, and this is exactly what he's lacked, and I've, I've explained this, sort of my opinion on this quite a lot since he's been our manager. I think Sean Dice doesn't get a better job of a mid-table side in the Premier League. He's His job and his career is to keep clubs in a division. That's what he's made it on. Now, what I saw for the first 70-odd minutes of that game was the best performance I've seen under Sean Dice. It's one of the best performances I've seen at Goodison for quite some time, to be fair. Yeah, same. I don't, I don't think I'm exaggerating there. And I thought, wow, this feels like this fella has turned a corner in his own managerial career. He's playing a side that's not just route one up to Calvert-Lewin. He's got a player who's going to look fantastic for it. He's an absolute whippet on the wing side and die. Fantastic debut there at Goodison. Um, full starting debut at Goodison. Um, things were going through midfield <laughs> with Irabunum. Things look like Everton were a decent side. Been quite some time since we thought that because it's just been, you know, 
result over anything else, hasn't it? When we yeah. just keep us in the division. Um, then you get to 80 minutes, and and I don't know what is in his mind there. When even when it goes to one, you think, okay, this is the time where you go to Sean Dice Central. This is the time you go <laughs> to what, what Sean Dice has made his career on. Do us a favor, lads, get 10 behind the ball for me and just hold it up. And yeah. he made two subs there, which were quite baffling for me. What he went and did there, getting better on. You essentially put two attacking players on, like for like. Mm. Really don't understand that. He's got a brand new centre back there that we can come on, put five at the back, and just short it up. Yeah. You're gonna, yeah, you're gonna sit sit back, you're gonna be on the edge of your 18 yard box. That's what's gonna happen. But when you're two nil up and then two one up, what what's in his mindset to think? Is he sitting there thinking, you know what, I've got a chance to probably show everyone what I can do here? I can I can make us win this three or four, and people are gonna think that I'm gonna be, you know, a top manager here. And yeah, I don't understand where it's gone. That that mindset there, Les, that, that's the thing that really sticks in my mind all the way through this now. It's a tricky one, isn't it? Because if he if he does make the the, the Moyes sub basically and put the extra centre back on and they still beat us or they pull it back to two two or something, we'd be moaning then saying we we had them there, why didn't we just go for them? But there's then, a little well, there's a smaller there's, there's a just playing percentages, there's a much smaller chance of that happening if you've got another defender on. Just yeah. by logic, hasn't it? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I can I can see why you could maybe go for it in that game because they were so bad. Like that yeah. goal came out of nowhere, and but they were so bad up until that point, and we were so good. It was like, well, we can probably get a third here. We should we should have been about three or four up by then anyway. Um, but then the, the sort of the, the caveat to that is, well, you can only do that if the better players are on the pitch. So you're taking die off, and and like it's basically nullified any sort of a, attacking threat that we had that outlook ball was completely gone he was taking three players out with him every time he got the ball mm. and then when he went off the numbers sort of evened up again then because they could just play a sort of normal game because they weren't concentrating on him so i think if you if you were gonna go for it you, you had to keep him on um and it, it the thing that baffled me i don't think i've ever seen a player as dead on his feet as eric boonham was in that game he had james garner on the bench he played on um Tuesday night, so it wasn't like he hadn't had a match under his belt. He could have come on for the last 10 minutes, 20 minutes, just to sort of keep that midfield shape because Eric Boonham was just walking around in the end. He looked goosed. Um, and the fact that he didn't make that substitution, the fact that he kept Dwight McNeil on, the Dwight McNeil down the middle uh, test needs to end now as well. The, yeah, It was a nice experiment, but he just he can't play there. Um, he's probably a left-back, if anything, looking at him now. Um, I just, yeah... I, I, I don't I don't get what he was doing. I really don't know what he was thinking. And also, as a manager, you've got to know how you can play your players together. And there's certain players you should never have on the pitch at the same time. I think Beto and Decore are two players who should never be on the pitch at the same time because they just <laughs> do not complement each other at all. Decore can get away with it more with Calvert-Lewin because Calvert-Lewin, his, his movement's a lot smarter. Yeah, so, he's, he's a perfect foil at times, or when he's at his best, isn't he? Yeah, exactly. When he's playing well, he, he's he's all right with the core because he yeah his movements a lot better, so he can make space for the core. Beto just legs it round after the ball. Really, he doesn't. Mm. There's no. There's no really. There doesn't seem to be any thought to his movement. He'll just run round after the ball, and when you've got him up front and the ball's not sticking, and then you've got the core just, I don't know, just sort of lumbering round like he has been. You know, since he's played, since he came back from injury, it just, it really depleted the, the attack and threat of the team. So then it all came back on the defence and you've got Seamus Coleman there. He could have been subbed on 80 minutes because, you know, playing a full game. When was the last time he played? 90 minutes. Yeah. Um, just a lot a lot of things he got wrong. Um, even so, even making those mistakes, there's no way that game should have been lost from 2-0 up. Absolutely no way. So that's on the players. But uh, yeah, he, he should have done a lot more to change it. I don't know what yeah. he does now. I don't know what he does next. He's, like you said there, 61 people in a poll, about a 1,000 have said sack him um, before Villa. I don't think I would. Um, I, I don't, I, our season hasn't started like typically as it recently until September, for whatever reason, because we've not signed players or whatever. We've been bad in August. Um, I don't think we've won a game in August since 2021. So... <laughs> And he That's did turn it around with Chelsea. Yeah, that's nuts. But he really, really needs to 
do something else. I just don't know what he does. I don't know how he turns it round. Um, he did. He did it after Chelsea, which I didn't think he could do, um, and he did. And we got those results, and we stayed up quite comfortably. He needs to do it again. I think he's got the players there to do it. Yeah, I think he's got the best squad that he's had with Everton. Um, hmm. And automatic, automatically, with that come pressure. Um, you know, I think I think that the narrative of this is 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 interesting each season. I think for those who aren't Evertonians, to look at this and think, well. This is going to be, it looks like, the fourth season on the spin where Everton are, are going to be in a relegation fight. And I don't feel that's going to change. Um, and that's not just based on these three games. I, I, and again, I refer back to quite a lot of the uh, season predictions that we did and, you know, a few of the guys, <coughs> eighth and things like that. It might well be the case. Everton might well turn this round. But um, Joe, uh, Sean Dice doesn't look like the manager for changing to me. And that, that's what a, a big issue is. I'm going to go through some um, some replies that we've had in a moment or two. But, yeah, I think you're right. I think, you know, it's very much chicken and egg, isn't it, whether it's the manager or what you see on the pitch. Um, I mean, there's there's things that underlie, the, that have been underlying a, a lot of blame things have gone to, as in people in Nachad and all that. thought that was Michalenko's worst game for Everton by a country mile. He's if you look at each, each of those goals, he probably had to say in each of them um, yeah. where... Just simply, he's beaten on the back post on on each of those. I get maybe the header goes in because he's in his small lad, and one of one of our centre halves just simply, simply just be flicking that over or, or whatever, just make at least winning a header. But um, that that last one, he, he didn't look like he has been Michalenko, and he's been one of my favourite players for the last few seasons. Go on, let's sorry. Just on that, sorry quickly. It, I think <clears throat> we've also been done a bit by the fact that I think Tarkovsky's probably been injured. Like at the, yeah. at the start, he's been play, he's definitely been carrying an injury, and pick for the Michalenko have been in bad form. They yeah. they they both hit a rough patch of form, so that that hasn't helped at all. No, no, I I think you're right, but then you know, you're talking you're talking about two lads have been like huge for us in mm. in in Michalenko and Pickford. Yeah, of course you you spare them a few things because you think if you that the, the human beings, the professional footballs, but the 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 human being. As in, you're going to get mistakes. Everyone has, has mistakes. I live my life by mistakes. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That, that's just a natural way of, of life. And I completely take that point there. But it's it's when that happens. I, I From what we've spoken about, from what I heard on um, post-match, I think, I think Matt uh, uh, Jones mentioned it a couple of times with, with, with Michalenko. But um, it's probably a reflection of how good he's been for us that you don't even really... You got, you, you're passing by in terms of ever criticising them or overly giving yeah. him praise because he's just there and he's fine and it's it's everything you need for the left back really. So that's perhaps why that went under the, the radar a little bit with him. Lads on the pitch, absolutely fine again. I mean it's a game of two halves, isn't it? The, 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 the whole the whole saying it's it's a game of like, well, we go three quarters of it great and then the last quarter of it's falling. <laughs> um that that approach yeah. though, the way in which he goes from 70 onwards I mean, I've, I think I've said this on every single show we've had last season, average sub 75 minutes uh, when he made changes. You were talking, you guys, a lot about how knackered so many of them looked. How he's not seen that when he's standing on the dugout when everybody else is 50, 100 yards away from what sort of happens on the pitch and is able to see that yeah. makes it quite... It, it, it baffles me that a manager can't see that. And we're not, look, we're not professional football managers. Do you know what I mean? But we can we can see things that are pretty simple like that. That they're just in layman's terms, aren't they? When you look at a yeah. lad who's knackered, someone's a knackered athlete. What do you do? Stop them doing it. Stop them playing. And and I really just don't. I, I just don't get that that that's a a reason or any sort of issue why in which he's doing so. Um. I mean, let's talk a little bit about the, the positives, first of all. Like I mentioned at the start of the show there, the best Everton performance I've seen in quite some time now at Goodison. Felt like what I've, I would have loved to have seen at the start against Brighton because that gets you in a hell of a lot of momentum. Yeah. That did go and 2-0 up. You've got Calvert-Lewin scored and who we've been slating for some time. <laughs> You've got Michael Keane looking like the best striker we've ever had since. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, you, you've, you've got everything in a nutshell there that you want from Everton. And it was perfect. Mm. If you said anybody who's never watched football before and you showed them the last 15 minutes of that game, 
compared to the first 75 of it. You think they're two different teams. You put different shirts on. You think that they are miles apart yeah. from the two different sides they are. And I just wonder, do you think there's a basic reflection on it that they're just not used to that? Not used to going 2 nil up in a game and just having to see it out? When's it, when, when is the last time you've done that? The derby? Yeah. And he, that that's different because it's a derby. Because you're still yeah. thinking, you know, until you had like 30 seconds left, you'd still be thinking Liverpool could get a, a, a result from <laughs> us. But every other game, I'm thinking, how often has that ever happened? I'm sure there's a stat there. Someone, someone will tell us um, when you've listened to today's show. But um, so much naivety there from from uh, mostly aged professionals. Like you said, you got yeah. Tarkovsky, you got Keane. As much of the criticism has gone towards him. Fellas, what, 30 odd now? Early 30s. You've got Seamus Coleman on the pitch. Um, you've got Calvert Lewin, who's been a striker for us for a good few years, although I don't think you can put much on him. Um, it's just a kind of gay. Yeah. It's just so baffling that they're not able to th- look at each other and think, let's, you know what, we've done this a lot. Not that they haven't. That give them any sort of excuse for you? I don't think so. I mean, it it, it is different game management, isn't it, when you're winning? Um, but it, it gives you a platform that you shouldn't really panic. Basically, if you're nil nil going into the last ten minutes yeah. and the team starts attacking you, then I can see where panic comes in there because you think we're so close to getting a point here. One goal either way, and you know if they score, what else we're done? There, you've got like a two goal cushion to think. Well, all right, if you get one back, let's just not be silly and just you know get our heads together and, and defend this. And they just didn't. And as you say, you know th- there was a lot of experience on the pitch. You know we, we're digging the manager out, but there was a lot of experience on the pitch there. Mm. To get a grip of things. Um. So yeah, it, it, it really is. It, it it is baffling. I think a lot of attention was on Endai and the game he had, but uh, I think you got to give Calvert Lewin a lot of credit as well. I think that, yeah. was his, that was his best game in a long time, and I just wonder because the transfer window closed, he didn't move anywhere. Whether his head's going to be on it now till at least January, maybe. Um, he might be playing for a move in January, but you know, if he plays like that every week. And he plays for a move, we'll benefit from it mm. until January at least, and then we'll get someone else in if that happens. Uh, but I thought he was really good. He ran that he ran that forward line really well. Still a little bit frustrating sometimes where the ball's getting hit long to him and he's having to head it back towards our goal because yeah. no yeah. I think a couple of times players made that forward run off him and he just flicked it on and we started the move. I just I don't understand why players aren't doing that. It's like That's- it's just it's just a basic fundamental thing. If you're hitting it long, run off the strike and make a forward run for the flick on. Otherwise, it's pointless hitting it long. Well, yeah, <laughs> you know yeah exactly. Mean? And he's heading it back into the midfield. Yeah, where, where yeah. there's a 50 50 going on there for whoever it's up in the air with. You know what yeah. I mean? I think that's spot on, really, at some point you've and, made there. And again, oh, you know, this is what you think is like just bread and butter, Sean Dice stuff. Sean Dice Central, like you said, that, isn't it? It's just <laughs> long ball <laughs> flick on off the striker, dead easy, mm. meat and potatoes football. Um, and we're not doing that right, but he, he did. He did have a really good game, though. Um, mm. <clears throat> but yeah, I, I, I just I've been trying to think of how that happened on Saturday. It's the worst one, isn't it? It's worse mm. than Newcastle. It's worse than Watford. That is the worst one we've had, isn't it? That's the one that's going to haunt us now. Next time we're two 0 up. Well, yeah, I mean, it's um, losing a game from playing well. I think that's put that puts you lower than low. You, you look at the first two results we've had there. Um, with, with Brighton and you know and Spurs away is a bit of a pace on its own really because didn't really expect getting any and it's no excuse but yeah. Spurs away I was thinking you know put your hard hats on anyway which we, we would have had to do but losing that that one at home to Brighton and you play shit the way you are that's you can digest that a little bit more easily because you're thinking we've played shite there yeah this one's been much more difficult because not just in, in, in terms of the results but in terms of the way in which we've played under Sean Dice, gorgeous day at Goodison. You're thinking, I think you mentioned it, lovely day for us all. Should easily get through to ease, ease the game off. You've got three points, first three points of the season. Move up the table a little bit. Go and watch the evening game. Nice pint in, in the sunshine. Should be as yeah. simple as that for every every fan. Just going to go through um, a couple of comments that people have made there. There's been, been hundreds of them. So thanks so much for getting involved. And we're reading through them all, but I'll just go for a few here. Um Talking Toffee just said, I think he deserves more than more time than three games based on last season. Navigated the club through one of the worst difficult periods on and off the pitch. Would seem rash to sack him after three games in. Not that any of the criticism at the minute is defensible. 
his in-game management has been shambolic. Completely mm-hmm. agree with that myself. Yeah, I agree with that, Defo. Uh, Vinny Hughes has said, I honestly don't know, Dave. This is referring to the question of whether you'd sack him or not before the fourth game over the international period. I honestly don't know, Dave, but it's getting more difficult to defend him after just five wins in nine months. You don't get many better chances than being two up with three minutes to go at your own ground. At your own ground. <laughs> Completely get that. Uh, Newbie Blue, I think he's, um, he's messaged us too. He says, no, can this stupid discussion... Can this stupid discussion wait until game 10 or else you might as well run a stay sack poll on a on a weekly basis rather than seeing a trend and yes I'm aware of the 12 games without a victory I get that I mean you know yeah, I get it, that as it well. is it is I hate this term but knee jerk reaction I think many people say it's not and yeah. the reason being that, that five wins in just 25 games people will go through stats like that Everton's best form under him came at the end of last season, which, you know, if you put that into context itself, you still think, well, Everton have had to save themselves from getting relegated. You start a season, and I think a lot that comes into this as well, there's probably not too many people may have considered this, but I certainly have, that it's the last season in Goodison. And every time we play a home, I think subliminally for many, that is always going to be in your mind. It certainly is with mine. I'm thinking anybody we play at home, I know we play two sides that aren't traditionally home games that we played against, but I, I feel as if them, you're thinking, this is the last time we're playing them. The games are going down and down and down by number. So it, therefore, in my mind, it makes it more difficult for them to sort of appreciate that on the pitch and think, I feel, I feel a bit nervous going into this for want of a better term. On the way home on the train as we passed the new ground, my dad just turned around and goes to me, I can't wait to get out of that shit old Goodison and into there. It's cursed. So it was just like, we're starting <laughs> to get that feeling of like, well, maybe things will get better when we get out, but it's... Beast yeah. outside, they're giving it loads, even now. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, think, but... um, I think Liam made a good point. We were speaking to him after the game mm. um, at the Denby. So he, he replied to the post about this show. Said serious questions of the manager as it stands. He's beginning to display that stubborn streak manager's 10 tend to when they know the writing is on the wall, sadly. I think if you take... I know it's it's been a really sort of bad run of games that we've not won, like going into last season as well. I think if you take this season in isolation, the big worry is that we've conceded so many goals, not just lost three games, we've conceded 10 goals in that time mm-hmm. and only scored two. But also, he... I don't, know, I don't know if we took it the wrong way, but it felt like he dug the fans out against Brighton. It, it felt like he sort of had a little bit of a dig at us. Um, then he's having a dig at the players for Bournemouth, um, not really questioning himself about what he did. He's showing yeah. that stubborn streak where he's got to get he's got to get the core on the pitch. Um, weirdly, he didn't play Ashley Young at all, which baffled me. I mean, that would have been a substitution to make there for Coleman, wouldn't it? Just to like put an easy one, yeah. I mean, that, that's fresh legs on the pitch for like last 10 15. So he, he's he's it feels like when he's talking, he, he is like, like Liam said, showing that thing that managers do when they're coming to the end, where it's like the sort of like throwing digs at everyone but themselves, trying to sort of say things are, are like this way when, when we can all see that they're another way. Um, so that that's quite worrying because he needs to he needs to keep his head and turn it around, he needs mm-hmm. to do something. Whatever he did last season, um, he needs to do that again to, to get this team winning. Well, we'll get through to that. The sort of quite staggering comments he makes uh, after games, which the, the one against Bournemouth was probably the reason that helped me to say I get rid of him right now. But <clears throat> just a, a couple of others there, which is uh, to put it in your mind there. Now I just said 100% he has to go um, because the squad isn't even that bad now. It's as strong as it's been for three years. What we've seen so far this season has been a total, a totally avoidable managerial clusterfuck. Nice way of putting it. Uh, Paul says, yes, his comments are unforgivable. I could smell it in the air. This is one I want to get to now as well. Conveniently. <laughs> and he does fuck all about it. Fossil of a manager. That particular uh, comment he made there, just a, a few words that he said, I could smell it in the air. And that was when we went 2-1. It was 2-1. I think it was. 
what have you done about it, Sean? Be my immediate reply. Uh, if I was <clears throat> doing what I used to in interviewing a manager post match, what, we, what are you going to do about it, Sean? Uh, I'd probably get told to do one and never go back <laughs> as, a, as, as a journalist interviewing a manager at Everton, but certainly from an Evertonian point of view, I'd be saying, well, you know, who's that on then, Sean? And and this is where I think you're sort of in the middle of blaming, play, blaming players or manager. Because for him to say that, where's his support for the team? Where's his support for the team? Where's his, these lads will see this through. I've got full confidence in them. And then they make a cock up and it happens because of them. But then the other side of that is, why are you saying you, you can smell it? when you've got substitutes on the bench there to smell a bit nicer, to put it in a <laughs> way, to put someone who don't stink a bow because they put in everything all game, throw a couple of lads on there. You've mentioned there, Ashley Young, there's several different... I think we could sit here all day and go through why you'd put on somebody else that's on that yeah. bench. You, just, you mentioned Garner, you've got Young, you've got the, the new lad there as well, make it five at the back. There's a lot of different things there. Look, we could be sitting here... Les, if that last five minutes didn't happen, we're talking about a superb win. Yeah. John Dyche's uh, greatest ever performance that he's been in charge of for many, many years, certainly his anyway, in, in, in context of the relegation fights. He's not doing himself any favours at the point I'm making here, really. And somebody of his experience, it concerns me, and this is why people will call me being far too knee-jerk, in saying that I can see why people and myself at the time, I, I, I said it, knee jerk about he's got to go, he's been a joke, he's got to go. I said that, consider time to consider it. And yeah, I've eased a little bit on that, being able to have a cup of tea, sit down, and not be as fuming as I was. But I can see why other people say this when it feels like it's a, a, a classic issue that comes about when managers start edging towards the exit. Um, you know, we can set that to one side that there's, if there's anyone to sack him or not, I think that's obviously, that's by the by, isn't it, really? But you get to a position where you've got a manager who starts coming out with different reasons why things have happened. The fans thing was inexcusable the other week. Him then saying, I could smell it, but you could still make a decision, Sean. And then when he says he can smell it, goes to the players his colleagues, not us, it goes to them. They go in today for training, round about now, and he's doing the team talk to them. If you've got someone like and I would imagine Seamus Coleman comes to mind immediately when he says, I could smell it, or refers to him, you know, why did you say that? Can you give me the logic behind, say, behind that? I'd imagine someone like Seamus Coleman, or would like to think, that he says, well, why haven't you changed it there with Gaffer? Why why have you immediately turned to us to blame us? Yeah, we fucked up. Yeah, there's been th- three crosses put to the back post and each one of them's gone in five minutes' time. Yeah, there's issues, specific issues for defenders in there. But you, you've, you're fine to put issues on us had we completely played woefully for so long. You've made no changes there, Sean, and I've got people who are fucking who are running around on their ass for most of the remains of that game, and that is why that is why I see people thinking this fella's not for us anymore. Because going into this season, and again referring back to our um, predictions, and uh, a few of the guys said eighth, and you know we had a laugh and a joke about what people said, and I said around fourteenth, just safe from as early as Christmas would be sufficient for me to say, right, we've secured Bramley Moore, which is, I think for many, equally as important as making sure we're still in the Premier League, given how long yeah. we've waited to go to this new ground. I'm thinking, well, okay, that that's progress for Sean Dice. I think others will be looking at it thinking, we've got a decent squad in, and I see that point too. In fact, we still didn't add a striker in as well, as Calvert-Lewin's a massive issue for me. That's why I think, I'd, you know, if you were to, if you were to grade it, I'd say a lot of people say that's you know an, an A or a B. I'd, I'd say it's more like a C, given the fact we didn't add a striker and you've got Calvert-Lewin, who you don't know what his issue is, either, yeah. either mentally or what he wants to do career-wise. That's that's an issue for me, a big issue for me. Um, so you you put all that into the mix and you think, well, can, can I really be too 
too silly, I think too naive to think Everton can actually have a half-decent season here. Well, no, I think Everton should be able to have a half-decent season, who we've got. I think yeah. Everton shouldn't be anywhere near relegation. PSR, crap, all that, gone. Appears to be we've sorted all that out. Everton should have a comfortable season based on who we've got there, regardless of the position in the league. We shouldn't be approaching stages where we're thinking this is potentially a six-pointer. Who have we got coming up in the next two games? Leicester City is one of them. Who are mm. probably going to be deductive points. That Bournemouth game at home, I uh, probably exaggerated thinking this feels like a must-win game. But here we are. Scored two, conceded ten. Bottom of the league. Uh, you know, International break, going to two away games. That, to me, yeah, it's... makes me look towards, it makes me think, if we were to go and lose those two, that is when the daggers are seriously, seriously out. Well, I I said sort of half tongue in cheek. Our first win will be against Palace. They they won't have won. Oh, we won't have won at the end of September. It's yeah. looking like that could actually be a thing, to be honest. Because Leicester away is going to be difficult to know. Like they just come up and they're not great, but we're not great either. And it's an away game. Villa, I, I don't know what he does for that game. Um, you probably revert to type and just really defend. They're probably not a team we can just go at like we did against <laughs> Um, I don't know. I don't know what he does for that. But we're still only three games in. There's still uh, four teams on one point. So one win takes you above them. The results go in your way. So we're still not massively cut adrift. Do you consider that now? Though? I mean, I, I know what your point you're making there, Les. Well, you could say if Everton you, won the first three, the top of the league by nine. I, I'm, I'm just yeah. No, what I mean is down what you, the talk down what you've made. What I'm, what I'm trying to say is that where, where do you, where do you see Everton progressing? In, well, this, not just this, to get three points, obviously, but do you get what I mean by that? In, in sort of the rebuttal I've given you there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All, all I was saying was like, the, but these next two games, now that's where you do start to get cut adrift if you don't pick up points in these next couple of games. Because then teams are going to be on eight, nine, ten points, not two, three, four, um, and that's where you really get cut adrift. It, I know what you're saying it, it does feel like we're just back into survival mode again, doesn't it? Which is a yeah. shame because, like you said, and like people have said, this is this is the best squad he's had since he's been there. It, it actually looks decent. It's still like we've said, this, it, there's still thin on the ground that like fullbacks are an issue, strikers is an issue, but there's there's a lot more. It looks a lot more solid and balanced team. Um, otherwise, even though there's not much depth to it, I think that first eleven is a decent first eleven, and he should we should be able to do more with that. But I just think that result on Saturday and the way it happened could really set us back a lot mm-hmm. because I don't think we'll see us playing the way we did for that first seventy minutes for a while yet. Um, I think it's just going to be backs to the wall, hit it long, to just do that, and then you think if we do that. Is Lindstrom going to get a go? Is he is he going to get a, a shot on the team? Because he, he didn't get on again at the weekend. Yeah. Um, and die, will he be sacrificed for some, for the core, maybe? And that, you know, that solid front three that he, he that he likes, but is completely ineffective. I just worry that we're going to go back to that now because he's going to look at it, panic and think, right now, I'm going to do what I know and just do that. Taking and die out this team would be madness. Stick him at number ten. He was good on the wing, really good yeah. on the wing. But I think if you stick him at number ten where he wants to play, give him a go there. He could turn defenders inside out there. He could win so many free kicks on the edge of the box, potentially penalties, because he looks a terrifying player to play against. Mm, he goes, He's tall, yeah. fast, and dead skillful. And there's yeah. nothing more. There's nothing a massive centre back hates more than a player like that. Um, so I think it, I think it'll be a massive mistake to do that. I don't know if he will, but I just worry that he will, and he'll just revert back to type, and that, I think that'll be a bit of a disaster. I completely agree with that. I think what you mentioned there about it and die, it gives me the Dale affair you feel him when I see him. It's like giving the yeah. ball. He's a live wire. You don't know what he's going to do. Yeah. Could be the type of player who has like I don't know maybe two in every five games. He has an absolute stinker. But you need him in the side. He's gonna he's gonna win games for you for the other three. So you have to consistently play him. Don't trust Sean and Dice being the manager that does that. By the way, he no. plays percentages like a manager I've never seen before. Interesting point here from Mike, a defensive manager in meets bare minimum objective. 
we want more, so he's sacked. More attack in mind, the manager comes in, ends up further down the league, and then the defensive <coughs> manager, uh, sorry, and then the defensive manager comes in, so the other one is sacked, but a more defensive manager comes back, rinse and repeat, and there's a proper structure and investment. Um, yeah, I mean, if we were to do a podcast that we wanted to last 30 seconds, that's pretty much the most perfect way of describing it. <laughs> um, but, but in reference to us there with Mike, I mean, do I want Dice sacked? Uh, no, even though I've said yes, I know it's contradicting what I've said uh, after me instant reaction from on on the social media. Initial reaction was yeah, uh, I think that that was appalling. I'm pretty sure our good friend Mark Mosey would be saying the same. Who uh, no putting words? Well, I am putting words in his mouth there because we haven't spoke for a while, but he was edging towards that at the end of last season. So I'm pretty sure he's fuming this morning as he drives to work. Um, you know. Where he comes back, the question you put there, where does Dice need to turn things around? Mm-hmm. He'll he'll go revert to type, I think, what you refer to there, particularly away from home. Um, yeah. I would not see him thinking... He would, I don't think he'd look back at that game, which I'm pretty sure mm-hmm. I'd like to think. He's watched it about seven or eight times since it happened. Look at it and think, Do you know what, lads? Talking to Ian Moan and Sean Stone sitting next to him when he comes into work. That's us. That's the Everton I want here. Yeah. Everton play like that. Everton aren't going to be in any danger whatsoever. If I was Ian Stone, if I was Ian Warren and Steve Stone, I'd turn to him and say, "Well, yeah, if you'd have put Jake O'Brien on, we'd be sitting here having a couple of bevies first first week on a Monday and giving the lads a day off." That that's how that's how sim- simple it felt to me towards the end of that game. Yeah. Um, no, I don't think he should be sacked. I think that he's. He's shown us the indications that have led to managers being sacked. Results, uh, five and 25 wins. Um, the way in which we've played. Maybe that's why, Les, just thinking right now, thinking out loud that what, what we've spoken about here is, I'm thinking out loud to say, well, maybe as he, as he created some sort of expectations here by in the first, in the first 75, you've played that well. When you don't win that game, I think you're more disappointed than if Everton, like I said, against Brighton. You sort of think you could see Everton getting beaten when Brighton have gone 1-0 up. You're thinking, this is the same old, same old. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to get beat, we're going to play shite. There we have played well the other day and then lost the game. A lot more difficult to digest. Yeah, it, it, oh, it definitely does. It Because it, it just makes it more inexplicable, doesn't it? And yeah. like you said, it was so easily avoidable. So easily, because they were, as, as good as we were, they were awful. Even even when they scored, they didn't look like it's you know when you get that feeling when a team scores and you think, Oh Christ, there we go, they're gonna batter us for the last ten. When they scored, they didn't get that feeling at all. It was it was just it was never gonna happen. We battered them that much. We'll just see this out, it'll be fine. And then they just they just came on to us a little bit, little bit of pressure, and the team team caved and crumbled. Um so yeah, and, and it's Sean, Sean Dice's niche, by the way. That that that's Sean Dice. What he's made a living for yeah. is defending, not conceding goals. And yet, yeah, when you're winning a game, he well, concedes goals. Well, this is it as well. And you know, when you've got a manager who is built as towards a managerial brand on defending and keeping things tight, and you've conceded ten in three games, and you've played Bournemouth, Tottenham, and Brighton. You know, it's not like it's Arsenal, Man United, not Man United, that shit. Arsenal, Man City, and Liverpool, is it? It's like, you know, Tottenham are decent. Brighton are going to have a good season. Bournemouth will be down there. You can't be conceding 10 goals against them. So when, you know, when when he does that, you know, you have you have got to question that and wonder what what is he, what is he going to do next? As you say, I, w- I wouldn't sack him because, and I'm not just saying this because we can't keep sacking managers because, you know, at some point we're going to probably. Um, I know because... people just say for the sake of it, but it's 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 not just for the sake of it. It's no. because of what we've been, what we've become, the results that manager's got. You know, even refer back to Lampard there where people are screaming, get him sacked after three or four games, probably similar to this when it, when he was our manager. Probably went a little bit quicker. People are saying it a little bit quicker because he's an inexperienced manager that's failed everywhere else before yeah. he's come to, to Everton. Um like you say, they you know always going back to the well to get a new manager. <laughs> I'd like to think people say it quite early because they're thinking surely we're going to land upon one that are going to be a success. Look at Ancelotti, for instance. 
obviously him, he, he's on a pedestal himself, isn't he? Because of who he is. But out there, you're thinking, yeah, there's got to be someone in there. There's got to be someone in there who, who isn't managed. I mean, people have mentioned Potter. People have mentioned, as they always do, Moyes coming back. Um, <laughs> it's 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 just a merry-go-round, isn't it? And yeah, and if if we did sack Sean Dice, and I think this might happen sooner rather than later, we'll get Moyes back. That that seems inevitable to me that Moyes will come back. How would but you then, feel about that? I don't know, really. I don't really. I don't really want him back because of our end. But you know, he's really good at he, West Ham. No, he did. He did well at West Ham. So you know, he, he might. He might be all right. He might. Yeah. I think. He, I think he probably would do all right with this squad, to be honest. Yeah. Um. But I just. This is this is the inherent problem with the club, isn't it? That I like. We touched upon. It, I think in, in a mailbag whereby this Premier League experience thing. We will always go for players. You've got Premier League experience. We'll always go for managers. <laughs> You've got Premier League experience, and maybe managers that have managed us before, just because we know who they are. And then you look at like Brighton. Now you know their season. Their season could blow up completely, and they might like nose dive. But they've played three relatively tough games on the face of it, um, and they're what the second or third now, aren't they? Well, they're yeah, right up there they're anyway. They're on your old manager, most of the got a, who no one's heard of. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. And it's like we would never ever dream of doing anything like that. Like going to Europe and finding someone who thinks, you know what, this is a good fit for our club because I don't think we know what our club is anymore, do we? We don't know. No. Brighton have got that, Brighton have got that sort of identity, haven't they? Uh, where they know that they bring managers in to fit into what they've got. We just haven't got that. Like like you read out before, we get a defensive coach, we get an attacking coach, we get this coach, we get we tried every single coach possible, and we still not cracked it. Um, and I think that's because the club doesn't really know what it is, where it's going, what it's doing, and. That that's a that's a big problem for anyone who comes in to manage them. So, like like people have said, he he's done really well to manage us through probably the most well one of the most difficult periods in the club's history with those two points deductions, and you know came through it quite comfortably in the end, despite that mad run of not no wins. We did get quite a few draws in that, which which saved us in the end. Um, but I just feel like it it's it's just a bad job for anybody, isn't it? And. That, yeah. That's what we're always battling against as well. When he's when he's gone and done that, I think you know you you put plenty of credit in the bank, which he should have. Which is why I retract what I said about I'll get rid of him. Um, not three games in. I think the manner in which what we've seen, people I understand will say that look, it's it, you need to look at it hard right <laughs> now about trying to get somebody else. The format, the way in which we've gone about it, you've lost three games, your first three games, and played the first 70 we did in each of them, then you're thinking, do you know what? That's unlucky. That's just a couple of things that he's going to sort out. He'll line them out quite comfortably there. Um, the, 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 there's a difficulty I see with him because the, the the question we've had at the start of this is what does he do to turn things around? We've we've I think we've answered what we think he's going to do and that is revert to type. What he needs to do is a more difficult question. Um, what he needs to do uh, is work out how to make substitutions. That, that's my opinion. I don't think... I think he can manage a game out to a certain point where Everton aren't losing. I think he can do that quite effectively. Mm. He's not the kind of manager that throws, throws, you know, throws it into the wind and thinks, you know what, we can win this and win a throw three three attacking players on for three defensive players. He's not going to do that. He's never that manager. He's never, ever going to do that. What he is really good at is if Everton go 1-0 up, that's how he knows to shut the door. This is where he hasn't. This yeah. is where you feel that, is this the end of the road for somebody like Sean Dice if he can't even go and do that? Are we going to be in another relegation fight? Those three first three games indicate that we are. Um, that's why I can understand when people say about this, but you, you, you've got the majority of people that have come in at us um, and all the response we have, which thanks to everyone who's got in touch. And I was approaching a couple of thousand people who've been in touch um, generally saying, the majority saying that they get rid of him right now. Immediately, the, anybody else who doesn't want rid of him would say, what's the alternative? Have we got anybody to go and sack him? Understand all that too. Do you, do you feel he's got enough in him to change what we've seen so far, Les, because I think the immediate thing I'd be saying right now is 
that first 70 odd that we saw repeat that then Sean and by all accounts I think we'll be fine I don't think he's the manager that will do that and and think do you know what that is going to work for us I'd like to think he is I'm not sure I trust him to be able to do that and I think that's why we'll see him revert to type even this early in the season and I think we're all going to be sitting there soon and say after the five you've got Leicester away and you've got Villa away could all be sitting here when we get Palace at home thinking I'd, t- I'd badly won 35 points, 40 points again. That'd be a real disappointment. You can't go, no one goes into a season without thinking positively. Nobody, even even fans who are extremely pessimistic like me. I said 14th, which is you know, the, the promised land for me. That That's me being massively positive about the Everton situation these days. Um, and I don't, I think it can, it can turn quite quickly, as we've already noticed in terms of what people consider, what they consider is going to be a, a good season for Everton. They have to finish at Goodison Reverse, to what we were saying at the start. Getting a good season for the final time at Goodison, that is going to, that's an issue for many people. That's going to be a part of many people thinking we've got to go into those last, like we did last season, which we yeah. finished with a, we finished with a plum really, didn't we? You think about how we stayed up in the end. It was comfortable after the final five games. Yeah. Doing that at Goodison will be a different matter, given the, the pressure that's going to be on that from all of us. Do you do, do you feel as if he he's able to turn his type, be able to the career that he's had, where he just puts fires out all over the place to keep teams where they are, which he largely did successful successfully at Burnley, but then was found out, which I think that needs to be taken into account. He was sacked for. Yeah. I'm going to say Michael Jackson, but it wasn't. It was something Jackson, uh, Burnley, what you took over from him when he was sacked. He's sacked for a reason. Gets the Everton job, which to many, including myself, was a bit of a surprise, and I certainly didn't want him at the time. Become a much more fan towards him, towards keeping us in the league. Main thing we needed. Gets to finish the way we're edging towards the finish of the show, ELS. Um, is he going to be the essential fella that ends this season with us? Are you going to? Are you happy if we have Everton took the amount of points within three points, say of Everton going down? Would you be content with that? No, I wouldn't be happy with it. But I think, I think the the aim this season is to just make sure we stay up again, isn't it? Really? Well, have you I bitten? Hope... More, more, more. That's a question. Have you bitten more? Have we all bitten a little bit more that we can, that we can chew, thinking that Everton need to have? A pretty straightforward season, a pretty Maybe. decent season, than than yeah. going to a relegation fight and successfully stay up. And we're all nervous trying to go to Bramley Moor as a top flight side. It doesn't. It doesn't feel like it was too much to ask to just have a, a relatively normal season. Um, you know, given the teams who come up, given the fact that Leicester might get a points deduction, given the fact that we were largely okay last season, really. You know, in the end, it does. It doesn't take much to do all right in this league. It it really doesn't. My this is all on him now for me. It's it's what he wants to do. So he's now for the first time since he's been at the club, he's got two options really of how to play. He's got the option we can play like we did against Bournemouth for the first 80 minutes, whatever. Um, which he can play that way against the weaker teams in the league and probably blow them out the water like we did with Bournemouth, but not make the mistakes we did at the end of the game. There's enough shite then, in that league, Les. There is, yeah. And then against the better teams, you can then play that more defensive way and just try and grind out the results, frustrate the better teams and try and get results that way. The worry, which it probably would do against Villa, but with that outball of Endai or someone fast up front with that outball to get you out of trouble and relieve a bit of pressure on the defence, that's how I would play against Villa. But then against Leicester, go for it, attack them. Um, there's, there's no reason why not, because he has got the players there to do that. Now, my worry is that he won't that he will mm. just try and grind out results against everyone. And that's when the season will become a drag. Not just in terms of the results we're getting, but now we, like like you said before, now we've seen that the team can play that way. That does put a bit more pressure and expectation on them because we do want to yeah. see that. I've always said I don't go the game to be entertained. I go, I go to see, hopefully, Everton win. And the result's the most important thing, which it is. But when you see that we could get a result playing like that, that's that's what you want, isn't it? And he has got that option there now. So I hope he uses it, but I don't think he will. It's, it's yeah, I, I completely agree with what you said. 
it's ironic, isn't it, that we're sitting here saying, Sean, sure, go back to last season, just keep us in the league, mate. I, I don't think it'll be... <laughs> The way those first three have gone, I don't think it'll be too far away before we're all screaming. That's it. What are you doing getting 65% of possession in the game? Go back to having the ball for five minutes and getting us a draw. Um, but yeah, well, it remains to be seen. But obviously, we've got an international break on, which I usually can't stand. Certainly not at this stage of a season when you sort of get some momentum going. But it might be something that benefits Everton and he's able to get back into the uh, into his office, put his computer on and, and have a look at some things that he could maybe do to improve uh, which he makes substitutions certainly in my opinion anyway uh, that's the end of this one on Blue Monday thanks a lot for listening to us, thanks a lot for all the, the input as well and only uh, mentioned a few people who've given us um, a few replies to what I put out there but thanks to everybody we'll def- definitely be going through more of that throughout the international break because um, we'll be talking a lot on what happens at home to Bournemouth and there's plenty of other different things that you'll see over the next fortnight things that not particularly go to the pitch that we have at the very uh, specific moment, but things that we, we like to cover, things. There's obviously a lot of nostalgia that we like to do as well. Let's just show that is uh, it's quite famous that we do now with the OMBB. I think we've got a couple of them coming, Les, maybe. Yeah. I'll do one tomorrow. I'll we'll have that so coming in. Paper, yeah. yeah. So we'll probably have one out there further this week and maybe one next week as well. Um, so stick with us as you always do. Thanks for your support as always. And next we've got the byline with Matt and Paddy, which will be incredibly interesting based on the fallout of what happened against Bournemouth. That'll be out tomorrow morning, Tuesday morning, for everybody who's listening at a different time. Uh, and thanks very much for listening. And uh, up the toffee is when we return in two weeks' time. 